surprise, surprise, Keon Menefield gets to play basketball this season and does as Arkansas avoids one of the most epic collapses I've ever witnessed in college basketball to defeat Lipscomb by a score of 69 to 66. This is Arkansas Basketball Recap. I'm Daniel Price. This is Jacob Price. Here to break it all down for you. First thing you might notice is, is you might say, well, good. Finally, the Razorbacks hold someone to under 70. Like they, they only they held them down to, to 66. Man, it didn't feel that way, especially when you score 69. Um, th- this game was so weird because we got to state from the jump, Arkansas had a 20-point lead in this game. And let a team go on like a twenty-one to two run uh, at one point, a seventeen to zero run in the second half. And you think, man, it must have been raining threes down. No, no. Like if this team, this team hits some threes. This team uh, averages nine threes a game. They didn't get there. They didn't hit nine threes. If they had been hot from the three-point line, we had been in big, big trouble. But Arkansas's inability to keep people in front of them just destroyed them the second half. I mean, it, it was this was guys just getting to the cup. This was guys getting offensive rebounds. And what was weird is that at a halftime, mm-hmm. and, and really the first couple minutes of the first half, it started to feel like maybe Arkansas had figured a couple of things out. Now, here's the thing. Let's go is not a good team. Uh, uh, it might not be terrible, but they don't have the, anywhere near the athletes that Arkansas has. Their two leading scorers didn't even play in this game. Their two best players aren't there. Uh-huh. And that is very concerning. And, uh, that, I mean, there was, it, it, it was so weird because at times the ball was moving pretty good. You felt pretty good about stuff. We got some points in transition, which we hadn't been doing. It, I guess technically we we do get points in transition, according to Ken Palm, like, but it doesn't feel like we do. I, I don't know. I don't know how they what they consider a transition point, but it doesn't feel like we get a lot. We did this game, and the if you want to know, you know, you guys might hear Jake talk about gripping. And if you want to know what that looks like, look at go watch the film of Arkansas in the midst of a seventeen to zero run by the other team, and you'll want to, you'll see what it means to grip, and like these dudes were gripping so hard it couldn't do anything right and uh they end up they end up coming coming away with a a three point win but could have easily lost this game. Even that last shot. I mean they got a good look to get they could have taken the game to overtime. Yeah, I mean that comeback was not like prototypical comebacks where a team just gets super hot and starts raining stuff. They did get they definitely had confidence starting to build over the course of that 10 mm-hmm. minutes and started to, you know, get loose a little bit. And they did hit a couple of, you know, tough shots, but that was mostly a weird, weird factor of Arkansas not being able to score. Mm-hmm. We didn't score for like, we scored like seven points in the last 10 and a half minutes. Yeah. Cause I remember with 10, with 10 plus like 10 45 or something left looking at it and going, they, we were up by 20. They had, we had 61 and they had 41. And it was like, I was like, okay, well, we're, you know, I mean, this, we're better than this team. We're finally going to hold this team down to like we should. And we'll, we'll probably end up with 80 and we're going to end up with something in the mid fifties. That's a pretty good, you know, point differential, good defense, good offense. That's what you're looking for. We, I could, would never have, if you just said, you're going to end this game in the sixties, I'd have said, that's not possible. We're not going to not score 10 points in the next 10 minutes. You know what I mean? And it, we just, it was just, we could not buy a bucket. And ultimately this whole game, I mean, there's a, well, we can talk about all the details of why, but I, I mean, the hogs are in trouble. Like, I mean, I'm not ready to full blown jump on the panic button yet, but we were way better athletes than those guys. All of our guys were quicker, jumpier, you know, and like you said, they were, I'm watching, we, we said this before, but I'm watching medium-sized, medium-quickness white guys driving to the cup and laying it in like a layup multiple times over and over again. And I'm like, I don't even understand how what's happening here. Like, I, that looks like me out there. 
just driving to the right hard with my good hand and just laying it right in there. I'm like, what? We're supposed to be a good college team. That's not supposed to happen. Like where a guy just drives straight down the lane and lays and it, it in. And, and it wasn't like one or two times. No, it was like all night. It was from the it was from the jump. And honestly, even when we got that twenty point lead. Dude, go back and watch the first half of that game. Our defense is not good. They, if they were better shooters, they we never would have had a lead. They, we got that lead because one, they turned the ball over quite a bit, and um, they just didn't they didn't perform they didn't score very well. But dude, they were getting wide open shots. They just missed a bunch of them. Like, I, I mean, I'm sitting there yelling at my TV, going, "Okay, we're up, but." We almost shouldn't be. This game should still be tied because well, they, they've missed five wide open threes. We haven't solved the problem of guys pass the ball around and just and somebody ends up open. I, that's not. I think it's this, dude. I mean, like, I I think this is and it, 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 the reason that those two things are happening is the same thing, um, and that is that if you if you're not going to be able to keep guards in front of you at all like you're not just going to give up layups eventually you might get sick of giving up layups the defense is going to shift the defense is going to collapse the, the whole the whole problem like the reason you see guys getting open shots is the same problem of guys getting all the way to the bucket and getting layups and arkansas's defense has to decide then which of those things are going to do which are neither good options which are like oh this guy just hard just hard straight line dribbled to the bucket and then you have then you have defenders like you know weak side defenders that have to make a decision: do they come over and help, or do they not? If they don't, they're they you saw what happens; they're giving up layups. If they do, they're giving up open shots because the guy's just going to pass that ball off. I mean, if you can't keep guys in front of you, you're in deep trouble, like because they like, could that's to... that's how that's. I mean, you've okay as someone who's played a lot of uh, interior defense. I know what it's like. I know those decisions. Everyone that's played a lot of basketball knows those decisions. Like, there's a guy up here. He gets his guy gets around him. Now you have to make a decision. Are you sliding over? Are you leaving your guy? Are you going to mm-hmm. leave him and you're going to come over and help because you know that guy's now wide open. Um, and and sometimes you know guys you get beat and stuff, but we're getting beat by guys that we shouldn't get beat by, which makes you very nervous for SEC play when you're like, dude. I know like some de- there might you might run into the guys from time to time that is like, dude, you can't stay in front of him. That that's crazy. Um every team we play, it seems like has a guy or two or three that you're like, can we not stay in front of this guy? And it makes it just your defense just falls apart. Like once if that if, well, you, if that's happening over and over again. And we've talked about it ad nauseum now, but like some of these guys just don't have good in defensive instincts. Cause yes, obviously we've talked about this a million times. They're getting driven on, they're getting a guy, all these guys that are not, not as quick as a guy should need to be, to be able to get around you as easily as they are. And they're getting our defenders on, on their back hit and they're out of position and it's causing us to have to help. But even when we're helping, I mean, you know, people always, obviously, if your guy is, if the ball is on the opposite side of the court and your guy's buried in the long, in the long corner, you don't play right on him. You play eight feet away from him towards the paint. So you can, you're available to help when it, because you're not doing anybody any good. And there's no way your guy is going to get the ball. And if it's going to be a long, you know, arching, arcing pass. So, you know, you have time to get back there. Our guys are, even when they're shading off of their guy, they're doing it like in, and it, it's not, you can tell it's not instinctive because they're just not doing the right thing. There was several times where the guy would get the ball at the free throw line, like in the paint, and there'd be a guy at the elbow. And you've got to know, like, not all helping is the same. Like I said, if your guy's in the corner and the ball's, you know, you know it, it's at least either two passes or a long arching pass, and you're going to have time. You can, you know, you can exaggerate your help. But if your guy is at the elbow on the three point line and the defender is, or the guy that has the ball is at the free throw line. When you help off, you can't help very far because if that guy trucks it over there, that guy's ready to shoot. And it's, it's a one, it's a millisecond pass. You know what I mean? Like he, the difference between passing the ball long or over, or even the view's not great. So, you know, it's going to have to be a weird pass versus you you're passing eight feet away from you to the three point line. 
And our guys are over helping. And they're even, you, you know, like if you see the guy turn his head and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm going in, I'm going in for the help. I'm going to try to box this guy in and get the steal. There's a way that you commit to it where it's like you're a shark and you just go for it and you try to smother him and get the ball out. And you're, you're gambling, but you're, but our guys are like, I'm just going to slide eight feet away from my guy who's right here for an open three. And I'm just going to kind of, kind of wave my hand in there and just kind of sort of disrupt it. It's like, that's not feast or famine. You know what I mean? Like, or no, that's neither fish nor fowl. Like, what are you doing? You're not, all you're doing is getting out of position and asking your guy to hit a three. That happened a lot of times where, or, or maybe getting called for a foul because you just reached in there and randomly slapped at something. Yeah. It's like, if you're going to help from that. And also the other thing is sometimes they're doing that when like your guy's not in trouble yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's a defender in front of him. And I mean, I mean, but, but, that, that that's all a thousand percent true. Like we're not making those kind of good those good help decisions. Um but man, a lot of this would be solved if we kept some guys in front of us more often. Like guys, we are not keeping guys in front of us as much as we need to. Well, the dude, the fact that, and this is why I say this is why the main reason I think we're in trouble is because I mean, obviously there's reason, like I I mean, we got another point guard guy that looked it's hard to say. It was kind of a mixed bag. He, I liked the way his body language looked. He didn't. He didn't necessarily do a ton. Oh, uh, you but... bring a guy in that's immediately the fastest dude. I mean, he's faster than everyone else. Uh, he, everyone yeah. knew that coming in. He's a fat. He's fast. He's bouncy. Um, he's uh, he's a he's not like you know like a big shooter. He's a slasher and that kind of stuff. But he's a distributor and uh, you like all that. Like like we'll see if I mean. I don't know. It looks like we could use some more speed on the perimeter. Like, I don't know. Can you, can you use that speed to kind of keep guys in front of him? Like, I mean, I know a lot of guys that are fast that don't play good defense and I know guys that aren't fast that do, and it, it doesn't always translate, but if you are fast and do play defense, do good defense, well, I'll take that. That's a, that's a great combination. We'll see. I think one of the weird things is, and dude, I freaking love Devo Davis, but D Devo can't keep anyone in front of him. I don't know. What, yeah, I don't know he, what's he, going he struggled. on. struggled a little bit and and then um the reason i think like that we're the mo the reason i'm like a little bit panicky is i thought maybe like you said i think you said on the last one like maybe it's time for us to stop messing around put the five best players in there rotate in the other three best players we kind of know who all those guys are and just try to get them to figure it out and that is not happening. Like if L Ellis didn't play, did he play a second? I don't think so. He, and he, he battled. played. He, uh, Ellis played one minute, and then and and a uh, battle hardly played. He played it, it, battle played eleven minutes. Ellis played one minute. Um, and battle didn't look good. Like no. He, and the fact that you've got a guy that is that talented. And like you said, L. Ellis is no, I mean, he's an average and it's like what, 20 points a game and stuff. Like these guys are talented players. And the fact that they can't get on the court because they just completely disrupt the defense more than it already is, you know, like, or at least it appears that Musk has no confidence in their ability to have mm -hmm. a positive point differential. It's like, yeah, sure. You'll, you know, you'll have 18 and you'll have 15, but, we'll lose by 10 because you know, we couldn't stop anyone or some, I mean, at least that appears to be the calculation is he doesn't like their, their, their point differential seems to be a wash. You know what I mean? And especially since both of them are a little bit shaken, it appears confidence wise, even on offense, it's not like they're killing it on offense. They're doing okay. And I mean, I mean battles uh, obviously had some like huge games. I mean, he's, he's a couple of 25 point games and stuff. Uh, and, he, and, his game or two. And, and his minutes have been much higher than this so he just didn't look i whatever Mus was looking for go in this game like he was not providing it obviously he, he didn't he did not look great i mean the minute breakdown is wild i mean he starts pinion plays him for two minutes and you don't ever see him again uh i don't know if that that might have been just to try to prove a point i mean that, i don't you don't know what's going on behind, behind yeah doors. it's it's hard to know because also like, like pinion played off a guy his guy got passed to kind of like in one of those situations mm -hmm. i i'd have to go back and watch it because it was literally the first play of the game but i think the guy he was guarding knocked down a three like first thing or mm -hmm. at least a, some shot and because i remember he went he went what well, he did is he went under he went under a screen 
which uh, is a big no-no from us. Like he, I saw yeah. him do it. Like he went, like the screen happened. He went under it. He tried to recover, couldn't. Must I've heard must say when this happens multiple times. I don't know why we go under screens. That's not something we teach, you know. And so it's uh, it's uh, yeah. It, I I don't know what that was about. Um, the uh. Or I, even I, like I, the, it, it could have just been him being like, dude, I'll roll anyone out there and give them a chance to do what I'm telling you to do. Like, and I'll just, I'll start him. I'll start you. Well, and give you a chance to do it. But then you see the other, and then I guess, that, I mean, Davenport, Mark was, was Mark didn't play for a while. Was Mark, was that, was that tr like an injury thing? <laughs> Cause like Mark didn't come, come in for a long time. Well, Mark ends up playing 30 minutes. Uh, so he plays, you know, you know, three quarters of the game. Blocker played 20 minutes. Uh, Devo plays 24 minutes. Davenport plays 27 minutes. Brazil plays 24 minutes. Chandler Lawson starts, plays eight minutes. You don't see him again. Graham plays 15. Mitchell plays 19. Menafield plays 19 minutes. I mean, that's kind of a lot of minutes for just showing up. Uh, mm -hmm. Battle played 11. Ellis played one. It's, I mean, he played it. I mean, he played everyone except for Harris. I mean, kind of on the team. Uh, mm -hmm. and I guess in Bay Fall. But, uh, I mean, like, dude, you're telling me, like, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, so Mark has the most minutes. Mark played the most minutes in the game with 30. Uh, next was Davenport. Davenport plays 27 minutes. I mean, so he was rolling a lot of guys out there uh, yeah. to see what was going to happen. And, and and Mark played, you know, one of the reasons, you know, you're like, well, how, why are we doing so well? Why are we up? Well, Mark didn't come in for, for a little bit in the first half, but when he did, I mean, Mark had 15 points in the first half. He was... Like that, I mean, that, that, that what if you want to know, like, offensively, what changed the second half? Well, Mark didn't just hit every shot he put up and have 15 points in, in the half. Yeah, that, that, no, Mark, 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 Mark had one, I think, thing where he had, I think he had four shots in a row that went in, like, yeah. back to back. back. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was, he got hot and then he got really not hot at the end because that zone, you would think that zone would be beautiful for him. But I mean, you want to talk about not knowing what was going on, like, he would catch the ball at his spot. Mm -hmm. and he would like he he did it like three times in a row where he was like and it's like dude dude i've seen you make that shot after dribbling around like a crazy person and then leaning with a guy in your face and gut it right now it's like wide open the man's not he's like half off you because he's in the zone it's like just not rise up and knock that down and he turned it over like three times from that position which almost cost us the game because we could not figure out how to score in that zone I mean, also, that zone, we look like this always happens to us. Do they not practice when a team throws a zone at you? <laughs> well, I thought, dude, I thought we had a lineup, and I think we do have a lineup. Like, you shouldn't be able to play zone on this team. You should be able to do that. Like, like we've got too many. We, we've got Brazil and and friggin' Davenport out there and Battle and and yeah, Mark. I mean, Battle and play. I mean, Mark played a bunch of. You can't play. You shouldn't be able to play zone on this team. We should be able to shoot you out of a zone easily. Yeah, and, multiple guys that can hit threes, multiple guys that can hit mid range. Even Devo can. Yeah. I mean, if you're passing around the zone, you get him wide open looks. Can yeah. you can hit mid range or threes? Like, yeah, I agree. It was astonishing how bad our zone offense was. It was. It, dude, okay, here's another thing. Well, I'll try to find some positives here in a minute, but yeah, you know, I am very concerned though. Like that, this is this was very concerning. The and what's weird is like, I don't know, man. You held them down to sixty six points. Was the defense that bad? It was bad. Like this team is not was not good. Like mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know they're they're seven and six or whatever they are now, dude. And they but missed they, a lot of like they missed so many wide. I'm telling you, go back and I need to count them. I'm gonna go back and watch this game and count the amount of shots Lipscomb missed that was bad. Like where our defense was very poor, and they ended up with a terrific look, and they just doinked them. Because the first half they doinked a ton of wide open looks and yeah, i was like, like oh, man well, this... dude you're playing a team that's missing their two best players that is already like you they, they're not even comparable athletically yeah do no dude it's like very concerning and uh, like could you imagine like those same guys being sec bodies and stuff and you're like I mean, you imagine them, imagine them having like a stud center and like a yeah. way faster point guard. It's like, we're not going to be able to hold down Alabama and Tennessee and these teams if we can't no. keep these guys from coming back from 20 points. No. Um, also, like Brazil, 
like why you he so Brazil ends up with six points, six rebounds, you know, one block, one assist. It's all fine, except for like, dude, why are you only taking seven shots? Like, and I'm not like a guy to complain about guys like not shooting enough and stuff like that. But I can't like I need I I need you to be more assertive, dude. Like I need like, you know what I mean. Like be more aggressive on offense. Um, uh, don't just like just don't don't just like float around the perimeter. Like you need to. Be, I I understand you're stretching the defense out. I I get it. But like some like I just I like and maybe he's still like tentative on the ink. I don't know. But like set. I don't think seven shots is enough for it. Like I need you to take more shots than that, and I need you to be more aggressive with the ball. Uh, I wish they would put him in pick and roll. What, what, yeah. Doesn't he seem like he would be a nightmare in a pick and roll? With For I mean, sure. I guess it's, we don't have a like a really true true point guard, but it feels like can't Devo or Battle or Ellis, any of those guys, they're all capable scorers. Can't they get Brazil sending them a screen and then force the pressure inside? Dude, I'll say I'll say, Davin, if they, if they I'll say Davenport up, in in Brazil in a pick and roll, because if those guys even come, even if they hedge a little. Brazil's mm-hmm. one of those a guy that's capable of pulling a ball off the rafters and dropping it in. So if they even fade a little of help off of that screen for a second, you seems like you'd be able to flip it up there. And if they don't, use the screen and drive to the basket. You know, yeah. if the if a helper comes over, obviously kick it to the corner, blah blah blah. You know, but like I don't feel like we I see us really doing a lot of that. But no, dude. I mean, like, like so does, here's here's one of the things that's wild is that. When you look at like the shots, so like we only we took fifty seven shots, which actually isn't enough. It's not enough shots. Uh, you know, Mark is six of twelve. He he took the most shots. Battle was one of five. Uh, but you know, you had you had weird stuff. You know, I mean, Graham was five of six. We'll get to him in a second. Uh, Davenport was three of ten, so he shot the ball quite a bit. Brazil then three of seven. Devo's two of two. So Devo shoots a hundred percent. He takes two shots. And, I, and I'm not saying that Devo has to take a ton of shots. I, I'm not. I don't think you want Devo taking a ton of shots, but it does seem to me that Devo like doesn't quite. That he hasn't figured out what his role on the offensive end with this team is. Like, is he the is he the point guard? Is he the facilitator? What, what's he? Is he supposed to do? Is he taking? Mm-hmm. He's the senior. He's the guy that's been there forever. He takes two shots in this game, and you're like. That's probably not enough shots. I mean, like two shots, dude. Like that's probably and not one, enough. And one and one of those shots was highly questionable. One of those shots, if you make it, was a. If you, I'm sorry, if you miss it, was a horrible decision. I, you know, I just got to telling my daughter this, that good shots are good shots, whether they go in or not. Right, and that, I believe mm-hmm. that that good shots are good shots, regardless of the outcome. And I actually said, and I said this: bad shots are bad shots, shots regardless of the outcome. It's like some people take some really bad shots and sometimes they go in. That doesn't, they don't all of a sudden transform into a good shot. So in order to be consistent about that, that isn't a good shot. Like the, you shouldn't take that shot. You're about yeah, to, they're going so. mean... to have to foul you. You're going to run it off. Like if he misses that shot and then they go they, and they get the rebound, you're up one. They have the ball with like 30 seconds left. That's a, that's a disastrous situation. So no, I would say and actually, it was, a, and, it, and it was a very like, missable shot because like that's yeah i mean i know he was close or whatever but like it was kind of guarded and also if you, if you have a fast break layup or a dunk or something sure fine like that's fine but other than but that a, but no, a, i would say that's contesting a, a, a giant a big man contesting you and then you doing like kind of a weird euro step kind of floater yeah. in between layup and like those shots are scary i don't care how close like it's when it's like it's neither a layup or a shot it's like a leaner kind of push and you're like those can those can do it a lot of things on Musk the rim. Would have, and... Musk would have lost his mind if he missed that shot. Yeah, lost his but, mind. But it went in, and I mean, like I said, the, a win is. Let's be positive now. A win is a win. We could. Oh, you could have lost have, this we... game. You could have lost this game, dude, and it would have been horrible. Um, it definitely could. It's definitely much worse if you do. Can we not play in Little Rock anymore, dude? That's I hated everything about that. I mean, I got every blessed. year I hate everything about it, dude. Like. It, it, it's like Arkansas football going there. Like, I came like, down I, here. I'm watching the girls game on the same court, and it's so ugly. And also, uh, like on that uh, block, can we get an over the rim camera review? Like, no, no, because like these are old ass setups. And like, I was like, I because because I kind of was like, I wasn't sure, but it looked to me like maybe he 
maybe he did get it first. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like it doesn't matter now because we won, but like that could have been huge. I mean, yeah. that was obviously that would make the difference between a three point game and a one point game. And I'm like, all you need right here, dude, we would know for sure. Where's the camera that's the over the top look? And yeah. It's like, yeah, we're, we're going to get, we're going to, I mean, I know it, it doesn't matter now, but we're going to lose a game because we're playing in like this freaking retro yeah. gym. Look, I get it. Has, it man. We, I, it has I know, lights that don't work. I know why we do it. Uh, I realize that Arkansas doesn't have pro team. I mean, the Razorbacks are the, no disrespect to the Red Wolves, uh, you know, go Arkansas State. But you know Arkansas's thing. I get it. There's a lot of like a lot of fans, a lot of recruits down in the little little rock area. That's why we do that stuff. And so I like it. But I don't know. Can, hey, Walmart, different, different, can we, can we get like... a different different venue? I don't know something like every time we play down there in Little Rock, it's like something crazy happens. Like it's always it's always weird. And so yeah, Walmart like make one less bike trail. You know the eighteen kajillion bike trails. Just take the money from one of those bike trails. Tuck it to whatever we need to do down there to make that place like a, a like do some updates. Yes, it looked green the whole time. I was like, I was looking, I was furious. I was sitting at Foghorns and I was looking up at the uh, the, all the other games, and they're like in these, they got these great reds and blacks and stuff. And I look at the TV that I don't, and I don't know if it's the cameras or the lighting or the court or what's going on. But it well, looks like they, they did, I'm watching a game from the 70s. Well, the first 10 minutes was crazy because the lights weren't working. Mm -hmm. And the, like they were, they was delayed because like lights would the lights that light up the court wouldn't come on. Yeah, and they just, yeah, then they yeah. just decided to go ahead and play anyway. So the first the cameras are like don't know what to do. So like it was looking nuts oh, for a little while. It was insane. But yeah. uh, okay, uh, let's go in closing as we as we uh, wrap this up. Um, positives. Uh, any any positive takeaways? I thought that Graham. Uh, looked pretty good in the 15 minutes he got when I mean, he was five or six. I did hear Must say in the post game, they're like, yeah, of course, because he's offensively, he's awesome. Uh, I can't have him only get one rebound. This is the thing. Yeah. And also, I mean, and, I, and I'm an old curmudgeon and I'm kind of like a quieter, like I, I prefer a stoic type of player. I like mm -hmm. Alex Collins. And the guy that hands the ball to the ref yeah. instead of yeah. does the friggin' shimmy or whatever. But I know everybody's different and like to have fun. But it, to me, there's a time and place. Like the guy that it's third and four, and you chase down a you know quarterback in the backfield and drag him to the ground, and now it's change of possession. You want to do the victory stomp? I get it. If it's second and eight, and yeah. you tackle the guy after he gains two yards. I don't understand why people are. I don't care how good the hit is. There's still another down, and he and all you did was your job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, Jalen Graham, like you're fighting for minutes, and part of the reason you're fighting for minutes is because you have flaws in your game. You know what I mean? There's just it's just weird. Like also, your whole team is struggling. You've lost more games in the first ten games than in, ever in Mus's career as the at Arkansas. You know, by by a factor of triple. You know what I mean? Like you've only ever he's only ever had one loss. You said that, isn't yeah. that right? Like he's only yeah. lost. He's, he's ne first ten games. He's never at Arkansas. He's never started worse than nine and one. Right. So we're in a hole here. Like this is a problem. Did you make one score or one block? Why are you standing? Out? Like every time you score, you're gonna like do guys too small, and like every time you're gonna stand over the guy and like maybe get a technical. I don't understand it. Like. You didn't win. You haven't. Even, you almost lost the game. You're fighting for minutes. It's like time and place. Like if it, I get, if, dude, if it's the end of the game, it's tight, and you get a big block in the final minute. That's like game changing type of block, or you get a freaking put down, or or if you dunk and like the guys contest you and you throw him to the ground because it's such a great dunk or something. I get it, but just a regular like, oh, I had some good footwork that led to a layup, and now I'm gonna like too small the guy or like it's just a, the taunting. I don't understand it. To me, it shows. It and like I said, this is maybe, no, maybe no, you, know what you, you know what you want to do in those situations. You want to realize that, like, hey man, this is this is and dude, this sounded like Mus's attitude. The whole like, dude, everyone knows, like, yeah, dude, you're dope, like in the post, like everyone knows. So, what is the thing that people are saying? Like, the defense isn't great, and you don't, and you're not rebounding enough. 
So maybe just do that and act like I'll do that every time. Act like it's like some like the thing that you're you'll do every time, and instead immediately like look engaged on defense. I mean, that's that's what that if I was like coaching you up, dude. That's what I would say to do. Like be like, dude, um, immediately just like act, just just act like you like it's yeah, of course. That's what I'll give you that all the time. Now like now let me go find the thing that I need that I know that I need to work on. Um, so I, I don't know what, um, but I mean, but he looked, but, but he did look it's great. Evidence, it's evidence of a certain, I think, and like I said, I might be wrong about this and just being an old curmudgeon, but I think that at the place that your team's at, at the place that you're at, it's evidence of a mentality and a little bit of a lack of maturity where it's like, you, you still need to put your hard hat on and work for on you know on both sides of the ball for these minutes and also you can't do it every time i mean i'm not like every time mitchell hits the ball and flips it in he doesn't beat his chest every single time you know what i mean it's like like you're doing your job i mean we get it you're a sick basketball player but like that was just good footwork and you made the shot I don't know. It's, it just feels like it's evidence of some of, of like, oh, this is probably this is a, a part of what's linked to why your mentality is you need to get less showy and just put your nose to the grindstone and let those let those big moments when you will be able to stomp and beat your chest come to you. Don't try to manufacture them every time when you're beating a team that's not as good as you. That's actually they should be beating their chest because they're outperforming what they're, you know, what their level of play actually should be. And it's like, you're just doing what you're supposed to do in this situation. Like those guys are smaller than you. You know what I mean? Like they're not (laughs) as highly recruited as you like, yeah, literally they're smaller, not as well recruited, not as athletic and a smaller school and look up at the scoreboard. Like you should be beating them. It's just this weird to taunt guys. Like wait, wait for the sec, wait for the good teams. You know what I mean? Do it to Duke. I don't know. Like it just feels like um, right now when you're fighting for minutes, you should grow up a little bit, but anyway. What do I know? Listen to that. Listen to the rant. Um, okay, uh, two other things real quick. Um, even though Davenport was three to ten, I actually have liked Davenport's minutes. I, I actually think Davenport, when Musk trims this rotation down, I think Davenport will be in it. And I think he'll be in it because um I I actually don't I think as I was as I'm watching more closely, I actually don't mind Davenport on defense too much. I, I think Davenport's trying to do trying to do the things that he's supposed to do. Uh, I'll be surprised if Davenport doesn't make that. I mean, just, and I assume that eventually this is gonna, this is going to get cut down and to to eight, you know, guys. I, I think Davenport will be in that in that rotation. I think he's he's played well enough to do it. Uh, even that chase down block, which they call goaltending, was like that's a that's a real effort play. And Davenport did have uh, four rebounds and three assists and two steals in this game to go with his nine points. And so that's all. He's engaged. He's playing all the way around, which I, which I think is good. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing, uh, Menafield, um, you know, one of three, um, I thought, you know, he, I thought he played good. You know, he also had three rebounds, smallest guy on the floor two assists, didn't turn the ball over. Um, uh, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see if he can be part of, of fixing what's, what's going on. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm super hopeful and mostly just like, what else am I going to do besides hope that he can like become our starting point guard? Because we do need, if L Ellis isn't going to be able to, you know, gain confidence enough to be the point guard We we got, like I said, Devo can probably do it, but it just doesn't look, I mean, battles just a scoring guard and, you know, Devo is not a pure point guard. It'd be sure. Nice to have somebody who could probe the defense and get, get the, game we i mean we kind of need a game manager because of how non-systematic our offense is yeah it'd be and I don't, nice and I don't, to have a guy i don't think i don't think blocker is that guy either i mean not yet yeah he's he's a little young yeah uh, i actually i uh must did make a comment and he says uh said it's which is i don't know what this means but he did say like yeah uh after tonight like some things in the rotation became very very clear i don't know what it was uh, and he did say like yeah, I was and, say it wasn't obvious to me well then he made this statement about something like um you can try as hard as you want uh but if you're if all your effort isn't 
industry isn't productive, then that tells me something. And I don't know what that means. Like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, it sounds like he has people in mind or person, pe- persons. And I don't know. I did. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, you're saying something, but I don't know what you're saying. But uh, so, yeah, I report. I mean, I feel bad for LLS right now, too. I mean, I don't know what it is like. Cause it's not just like he's not confident and stuff. Like it's also like, man, you're you're just straight up doghouse right now. So I, I, I'm assuming that there, there's a reason for it, but that's wild. Mm-hmm. But anyway, well, we got uh, Abilene Christian coming in um, on Thursday, uh, and then you get uh, what is it? You get uh, what is it? Commonwealth. Who's coming in here? I'm drawing a blank on the name, but uh, it was, here's the thing, just so you know, just to make you guys all nervous so that you know what you're dealing with. So you have Abilene Christian on Thursday, and then December 30th, you've got, I'm uh, sorry, NC Wilmington. Yeah, NC Wilmington coming in here. Uh, they are 8-2, and two, just so you know. Um, they have, let's see. If you're wondering, like, wait a minute, didn't they go beat Kentucky at Kentucky last Saturday? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. So just so you know, they beat Kentucky 80 to 73 in Rupp Arena. They're eight and two. That's our last non-conference game. So you got uh, Abilene Christian and then uh, and then that before you get to the SEC. So buckle up, man. Dude, I wish we didn't have so many losses already. It's tough, dude, because I can't. I mean, I, maybe, and, and the best set case scenario also is it's. I mean, it shows a little bit of night like weak mindedness, but you have to almost hope for it. But based on the way that we played against Duke, although it turns out Duke may not be as good as their rating is, so they, but they still are obviously a good team. The way you played against Purdue, who the Purdue is a good team, uh, mm-hmm. and it's like maybe we just get up and maybe when we get in the sec i mean i i mean we're going to lose some games and every game is going to be close it's going to be a struggle but it's still like if we play the way we played against lipscomb against any sec team we're probably going to get smoked so it's like but it's possible these guys just they just can't get up for these teams that they think they should be you know what i mean and maybe, maybe, maybe. they'll play it lo- way it looks, better it lo- against that's- it looks does it, it looks worse than that, but <laughs> I know this. Uh, Mus was Mus was asked, um, you know, hey, you know, like th- your team, this this you know, this happens a lot, and uh, you know, and uh, you always figure it out. And it, is there any similarities between this team and previous teams? He just said no. He's like, no, they have all their own problems. He goes, I don't go home at night and sit down to dinner and say, well, we'll figure it out. I don't know if we'll figure it out. And no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I mean- well, that's the way I feel too. I'm like, I don't know. If, I don't know if this is because the problem's been the same problem the entire time. Mm-hmm. And they, like I said, I, you know, he's shouting at them and trying to get them to do all these defensive things. And right off the bat, like every team, wide open threes again, like whether they're making them or missing them, it's like, oh, how'd they get that wide open three on the first possession? Oh, there's mm-hmm. another wide open three on the next possession. Oh no, Musa what said, in the world is going on? Must have said he's like, I don't know, same drills, same every. I mean, we're doing all the same, you know, same like we're doing all the same things. Like I, I don't. It's, he's like, it just hasn't clicked with this group yet. I don't know why. So uh, yeah, that's well, gotta be frustrating, right. I'm sure. But it, anyway, all right. Well, we'll be back uh, on Thursday, and. Uh, We'll we'll do it again. I'll see you then, dude.